the morning, the March 17, 2020 meeting of Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order, and we're pleased to have with us this morning our home commissioner, Carthen, to lead us in our invocation, and after the invocation, Board of Commissioners and our audience, please remain standing for the pledge to the flag. Our well, hearts and minds are clear. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this morning, thanking you for giving us another day. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will guide us, that you will lead us, that you will comfort us in this time of trouble, for we know that you are our ever-present help. We ask, Father God, that as we go before the people, give us wisdom to make the decisions that will lead us to safety. Give us wisdom, Lord God, to lead us to decisions that will allow us to conserve that which you have given us. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless every household in Douglas County, every household in the state of Georgia, and every household in this nation. We ask these and other blessings in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen, for leading us in our invocation this morning. And um, Board of Commissioners, thank you for adjusting your time accordingly during these unprecedented time, uh, times. Particularly today, uh, we were scheduled for a 6 o'clock meeting, but we had to change to 10 o'clock. And I appreciate the, the citizens of Douglas County working with us. Um, again, good morning to the citizens of Douglas County. We value uh, your voice and we appreciate your participation in county government. Clerk, do we have public comment this morning? No, ma'am. Okay, so we have no public comment. Before we uh, go into the meeting this morning, I wanted to uh, see if I could make, uh, I want your concurrence, Board of Commissioners, on uh, a declaration uh, to, to amend the declaration that I read yesterday. And I will read accordingly, Board of Commissioners. This morning I signed an amended declaration of, of an emergency in response to the COVID-19 health risk. The amendment authorized the chairman under county ordinance to suspend county business rules, procedures, and policies in order to deal with the current pandemic. Simply put, this meeting was changed in order to limit, limit access to the courthouse after hours, mitigate the risk to the employees and sheriff departments, and allow for cleaning and eliminate exacerbation of air quality and surface exposures. In conjunction with my meetings uh, with my cabinet and others, I'm directing the county administrator to plan a possible program of telecommunicating, uh, I'm sorry, of telecommuting of certain employees on a rotating basis as determined by the county administrator in order to reduce the number of employees in the courthouse and other facilities, other county facilities, expand social distances, ensure all essential county business is conducted, which will ensure employees work and they are paid and make sure that the employees work and are paid and mitigate air quality and surface exposures. I'm asking all county elected officials to to consider where appropriate the same as necessitated by the nature of the job and such circumstances as the elected officials deem appropriate. Board of Commissioners, I hope uh, we ha I have your concurrence this morning to move forward. District two concurs. District one concur. District, District three four. concurs. District four concurs. Madam, Thank Madam you. Chair, can I address one thing as you proceed? Yes. So, so board, yesterday, the original adoption of the declaration, we felt like in order for Madam Chair to have the ability to suspend the rules as far as the time of these meetings, we've added one particular uh, paragraph that the chairman, chairman, can I read the paragraph into yes. the declaration? Yes. So the amended declaration is the same as yesterday except for it adds to suspend any law, code, provision, or regulation prescribing the procedures for conducting of county business or, or, or the orders, rules, or regulation of any county agency if strict compliance with any ordinance, resolution, ordinance, or order, rule, or regulation would in any way prevent, hinder, or delay necessary action in coping with the emergency or disaster. 
provide that such suspension shall provide for the minimum deviation from the requirements under circumstances and per, uh, further provided that when practical, special shall be assigned to avoid adverse effects resulting from such suspension. Uh, that provision comes from various uh, ordinances and codes and other recommendations by ACCG if we're going to have to potentially uh, change some, uh, have some leniency from our strict rules of compliance about the timeliness of things. Otherwise, you can only change a county meeting, uh, the schedule of a county meeting once each year. Right. You can have as many special call meetings as you want, but you can only change the meeting schedule one time a year mm -hmm. so the public can rely on it. But we felt like since this is an ongoing thing, and remember this, old, this uh, declaration is only good for 30 days from today. Mm -hmm. It could be recalled by board action if need be. It could be extended by the chairman extending it uh, by declaration, but we felt like we needed that rule in place to be here today. So the chairman has it in front of her. She signed it. She's asked for concurrence. Technically, she doesn't need concurrence, but we want to make sure everybody understands that what we're really trying to do is to effectuate some leniency as to strict compliance with certain rules that may in impede uh, our dealing with the pandemic that's at hand. Thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. Okay, thank you. We'll move right into our meeting. Uh, Board of Commissioners, you have before you the uh, minutes. Um, Board of Commissioners, you have the commission meeting minutes of March 3rd, 2020, and the work session minute meetings of March 2nd, 2020, and the executive session minutes of uh, March uh, 2nd, 2020. Are there any corrections, deletions, or um, deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand as approved. Board of Commissioners, we'll move right into our new business. The new business is tab number four. Tab four, authorization to enter into a final settlement for a consent order and final judgment in condemnation proceedings for acquisition of required right of way and easements on parcel ID number 00101501506 and ID number 00101501505 located on Stewart Mill Park, uh, Stewart Mill Road in connection with the Stewart Mill and Yancey Road intersection improvement project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, do we have an, a, a um, motion to approve? So move. Sec second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're going to move on to tab number five, authorization to purchase easements from parcel ID number 00250150004, located at 5090 Stewart Mill Road, and parcel ID number 00250150139, located at 0 Stewart Mill Road, in connection with the Stewart Mill and Reynolds, Reynolds Road intersection improvement project and waive the lien uh, release and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, next we uh, move into our consent agenda. All items are subject to final legal review. Uh, tab number six, authorization to apply for fiscal year 21 CACJ, CJJ reimbursement uh, grant for the state court DUI slash drug court program and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number seven, authorization for the chairman to execute amended employee contract 
of Don Paul from Family Treatment Court Child Services, Case Manager of Family Treatment Court Case Manager. Tab number eight, authorization to create a new grant funded position of Family Treatment Court Clinician. Tab number nine, authorization to add two grant funded part-time van driver positions for transporting minors to programming. Tab number 10, authorization for the chairman to execute employment contracts with Jarvis Williams and Robin Wilder as assistant public defendants in state court. Tab number 11, authorization for the chairman to execute amended employment contracts with assistant public defendants Ceylon Copes, Beth Bethany Casa, and Chris Sunbach for work in superior court. Tab number 12, authorization with Douglas County Sheriff's Office to accept Governor's Office of Highway Safety Heat grant in the amount of $346,912.52 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. <coughs> Tab number 13, authorization <laughs> to, adopt, to adopt the resolution and award the bid for a tax anticipation note to PNC Bank in the amount of $25 million for an annual rate of 0.62% and $5,000 bank legal fees and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Tab number 14, authorization to award contract to Jericho Design Group for engineering architectural grant services for fiscal year 2020 community development block grant CDBG for senior services in the amount of $3,800 for the preliminary engineering report to be paid out of the contingency funds and 8.75% of all construction costs to be paid with grant funding once Douglas County receives the grant and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number 15, authorization to issue an invitation for bids for a new roof for the Deer Lick Park Activity Center to be funded through SPLOST funds as uh, recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Tab number 16, authorization to purchase a composting double vault restroom uh, building for Billard uh, Park at a cost of $46,523.11 to be funded through the SPLOS funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 17, resolution to amend the 2020 budget for 2019 rollover encumbrances and grants and projects. Tab number 18, authorization to authorize for a public hearing for the purposes of street name and address and changes in the area of the relocated Post Road and Veterans Memorial Highway. Tab number 19, authorization to enter into a utility reimbursement agreement with Plantation Pipeline Company in connection with the Lee Road Whitening Project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 20, authorization to enter into a utility reimbursement agreement with Georgia Power in connection with the Lee Road Widening Project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 21, authorization to approve the in-building radio distribution agreement, easement agreement, and right entry agreement between the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, and CELO partnership and rescind the previous approval given on July 23rd, 2019 on the same documents with Verizon Wireless LLC and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, that concludes the uh, consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any particular uh, item before we go forward? Commissioner Guider. Yes, could I ask Mr. Uh, Director Gary Dukes to come up, please? Director Dukes, if you could please come forward. This is uh, in dis uh, discussion about item 15 about the Deer Lick Activity Center, the new roof coming out of splash funds, and number 16 about the um, Compose, composting double wall uh, restroom building at Villarp. Okay. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Um, now, uh, you, you said yesterday, and I questioned you about this, the Deer Lick Park Activity Center roof uh, was in your budget, but it was cut. You, you added it as a BIR. 
a budget improvement request, right. right? But it was cut. It was also cut in 2019, was it not? That's correct. It was okay. not approved. It was not approved. Um, because uh, I went back in the minutes and everything, and the first uh, note of it until recently was in June, well, April of last year about the roof leaking and everything. Now, you did not say anything about the um, restroom at Bill Art, but you mentioned the Deer Lick Gymnasium and the floor and, and the ceiling repair and everything. So um, right after that, in June 4th, when y'all were discussing the, um, the uh, tennis courts at Deer Lick, and you, you said that the, it was going to go over the budget that was uh, placed in the uh, splash. You mentioned that the buildings at the um, for the concession stand at, Bill, at Fair Play and Bill Arp, um, with the budget for these buildings that you were doing, it leaves both parks no extra money for fencing or lights for the, those two parks. Now, uh, it was it, you did say that the. Um, buildings would be completed, the concession stands at both Fair Play and Bill Art would be done, but on a different cycle within the splash. So we, we were questioning at that, that far back whether or not there was going to be money to complete the projects that was already on the, the list for uh, splash projects. So you did put in the budget for a new roof. It was an issue a year ago, but it got cut. And uh, it, it was in your budget the year <coughs> before, and it got cut. Now, these are maintenance items, and maintenance items are supposed to be paid for out of the budget. And it's not, I'm not criticizing you, I'm criticizing the process by which this board sometimes puts non essential um, items ahead of essential items. To me, a leaky roof in a building could destroy the whole building. <laughs> Absolutely. So it, it was important that this should have been budgeted and not, but it even says here that you might take it out of splash funds. So the idea all along was to take it out of splash funds rather than maintenance. And the, these minutes are about a year old now. But what I don't understand is um, if we needed the roof two years ago, and I think it was leaking prior to that too, why was it, it why, why didn't we budget it? It was an important item at the time, and now it's become a crucial item. So um, you stated yesterday that Terry, with um, Atlas said that it would come out of the flow of the money. Okay, I, I pulled this list of uh, projects and it does have Deer Lick Park, $500,000. Is that where the money's gonna come from? No, that was the, the 500,000 minors. Are you talking about the tennis courts? No, no, that's beyond the tennis courts. The tennis courts is way up on the list, oh, and they're being done right now. But down at the bottom, um, toward the bottom, the list, park renovations, mm -hmm. is um, one, two. The fourth item down is Deer Lick Park, $500,000. Right, now I think that was uh, more work to be done in the park, but that would be up to the board right. where they want to take the money from. So the they, they said it was going to come out of splash funds, and I may right. have to refer to someone on the Parks and Recs to see if that's where it's coming out. Okay, uh, the, the concession stands at Bill Arp <coughs> and Fair Play, do you remember the cost on those? Uh, the two combined was over a million dollars. 
$1 million? Over a million. Okay. It was a million point one, I believe, I think that's something right. in that range. Mm -hmm. So Bill Arp was allocated $646,000 in the splash. So um, was that enough to build the uh, concession stand? Yes. And do the fencing and the lights? It's, it, the concession stand is going to take up almost all that money. Yeah, well, I, I remember uh, Madam Chair and I were talking, we were really pushing that we get those concession stands because they're the oldest parts in the, right. uh, the whole county, that it was very imperative that we have those new concession stands. But we were very doubtful at, at one point whether there was going to be enough money for that. So. This, to me, this wasn't an emergency. The Deer Lick Park was not an emergency. The restroom has been talked about when uh, I was the commissioner for uh, Bell Art Park. We, we met out there. We talked about getting access to the restroom from the lower two fields down there. To, uh, and all these years, it's gone unaddressed. Yes. So to me, we're not maintaining what we should be maintaining. And it, it beho uh, behooves all of us to try to stick to the list as closely as possible and not use the splash money as maintenance items that was not even, didn't even merit being put on the list to begin with by the Citizens Committee. So, um, this just seems like we're, we're, our priorities are in the wrong place. We could have had this money in the budget this year by deleting some non-essential items. So, uh, and we, I don't know about last year, I know $150,000 I can think of in, in 2019 that was non-essential. So uh, we could have done this last year. We need to set our priorities and we need to set it We've got to maintain what we have. We have more buildings coming online in the next year or so. Are we gonna let them go to seed? If, if we're going to build new buildings, the first priority is to maintain what we already have. And with that, I yield back. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner um, Guider. Any other comments from any other commissioner? Yes, Commissioner I, Mitchell, <laughs> Chairman of the Parks and Recreation Committee. And, and, I, and, and I was going to just verify and clarify, I guess, a couple of things. As, as you stated, those items were put in your budget as BRRs. It's up to this board that determine your budget, what you get, don't get, what we add, take away. Uh, I can remember you fighting for trying to get those items, you know, to be a part of the BRRs. But this board decided to make adjustments to the BRRs. Right. Um, it wasn't a decision of you, because if you had that decision, you would have had this roof done, correct? Correct. Two or three years ago. So mm -hmm. I think the onus is not on you, it's on us to assure what our directions are, what our true needs are, and where we want to invest in the true needs of what we already have that's existing. So with that being said, the new concession stands, the, um, the, the uh, new community center, the, um, uh, the, new cons the new building restrooms that we're building. Yes, out of SPLOST, uh, if that's the route of this board deciding to make that adjustment, then I don't see that being an issue. The bigger question is, you did a, a lot for those, account for those items that were needed in your budget. Correct. Only thing you can do is, make it make us aware of what these items are once that's done it's up to us to decide on do we want to invest in this because i can remember with the the bowler down there at um boundary, boundary waters that we let that got to an emergency state and we spent about a hundred plus thousand dollars just yes, to kind of get it back operable correct correct so let's look at this board more so than yourself as to kind of how we're doing what we're doing versus what you didn't do, it's what this board chose to do with those funds. 
and I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. If there's nothing else, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on. And we have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're going to move on to the approval of the expenses. Board of Commissioners, I know you had an opportunity to look at your various expenses. Do we have a motion to approve? Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion about your expenses? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Um, next we have our announcements, but before I ask our communication director to provide um, announcements to this board, any announcements from each board member? Do you have any announcements that you would like to go out? Uh, Commissioner Mitchell? I'll just share that uh, the events that I've got up and coming, like my coffee and conversations and others, uh, you will be getting an email from me that will be uh, counseling those events uh, based on the situation at hand. So just want to acknowledge that for the record that uh, uh, the, my aide will be actually sending out information to the general public on those type of cancellations and postponements that will happen throughout District 1. So just FYI. And I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and likewise, um, the four town halls that were set up for District 2, Anawake, um, Mount Vernon, Deer Lake, and the Hilton will be canceled. We'll have to reset them uh, appropriately through um, telecommunications. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. All right, with that being said, you have anything, Commissioner Carter? Okay. Just to let um, citizens know that you can get um, information um, from my Instagram and Facebook pages, um, Terenia Carthen, District 3 Commissioner on Facebook, and Terenia Carthen on Instagram. On there, I do have updates regarding um, schools where you can get, um, students can get the free lunches. I also have information as to how parents can get free internet while your students are out of school. And uh, any information that I do uh, come across, I try to post there just to update the citizens because I know a lot of you are on social media. And uh, so I just want to be of, of assistance and help while um, things are the way that they are. So uh, with that, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Guider, you have anything for your no. district? No. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Director Martin, please proceed with our announcements. Good morning, Madam Chair, Board Commissioners, uh, and uh, Good morning. those in our audience. Uh, we have a number of announcements just in regards to uh, uh, the situation at hand regarding the uh, health emergency involving uh, COVID-19. Um, as far as Douglas County is concerned, uh, all programs and activities at the Douglas County Senior S Services uh, facility, which is located at 6287 Fairburn Road, and the Woody Fight Senior Center at 8750 Doris Road will be closed uh, for 14 days to the general public. Uh, staff is to report to work accordingly. If any questions, you know, feel free to contact uh, your director there of senior services. Uh, Meals on Wheels, uh, non-emergency medical transportation and homemaker services will continue as scheduled. And that's important to note that Meals on Wheels, non-emergency medical transportation and homemaker services will continue as scheduled. Moving on to um, our libraries, uh, all Douglas County Public Libraries, 
parks and recreation facilities, and parks will be closed to the general public for the next 14 days as well. Um, the presidential primary scheduled for March 24th has been delayed, this was announced over the weekend by the Secretary of State, has been delayed to May 19th. Uh, so that's important. Again, the presidential primary scheduled for March 24th has been delayed to May 19th. So no early advance in-person voting uh, is continuing at this time. That has been stopped. All jurors have been released for upcoming trials in Douglas County for the weeks of March 16th and March 23rd. Again, from Superior Court, uh, Chief Judge Emerson, um, all jurors for upcoming trials in Douglas County have been released, uh, but court is continuing to operate uh, uh, under normal services, normal procedures, excuse me. Um, in terms of magistrate court, all civil cases set for March 16th at 1.30 are continued until Monday, March 23rd, uh, 2020 at 1.30. Uh, all this is subject to change, but this is the guidance right now from uh, Judge, Chief Judge Camp. Again, all services, all civil cases set for March 16th at 1.30 are continued until Monday, March 23rd at 1.30. All civil cases set for March 17th at 9.30 will receive a notice of hearing through the mail with a new court date. For all up-to-date, canceled, postponed county activities, we encourage the public to please visit our county website, celebratedouglascounty.com, and want to truly encourage everyone to please stay engaged with celebratedouglascounty.com. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Communication Madam, Director. Uh, Madam Chair, could I? Rick Martin. Yes, Commissioner Guider. I'd like to just ask the question. I've had uh, some of my constituents uh, ask me this, and I forwarded you uh, one of the emails about the walking tracks at Clinton Farm, if they were going to be accessible to the public during this time. And I think we have some uh, tracks in other parks, and I didn't know if they were going to be accessible. Director Dukes, could you come forward and respond to Commissioner Guider's question? Thank you. This might relieve some tension <laughs> with everybody being in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. We have a number of parks that have walking tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, Boundary, Fair Play, Clinton Nature Preserve, Woodrow Wilson Park, of course, Deer Lake. And at, when we close the parks, of course, all those tracks are inside the park. So the problem we have, and of course, I'll leave this up to the board, of course, but when we open the park and we open the parking lots, then visitors that want to come and walk have access to all the facilities, which are our playgrounds, our ball fields, and so forth. And there's no way, once they get inside the park, basically for us to control that. And one of the big fears I have is the playground equipment, because we can't sanitize playground equipment. I mean, we can, but the first person that touches it, it's, it's no good. So same with the restroom facilities. They're all locked down. So, you know, uh, I hate to close the walking mm -hmm. tracks because a lot of people use them, but when we open them up, we're opening up the entire park facility, basically except for the indoor facilities. Okay. Commissioner Mitchell, did you have any other oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I, I'm, you I'm agree? Exactly with you. Yes, yeah. totally agree. Commissioner Guider, yeah, I agree. just needed the information out sure. there because we're getting emails about it. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. And our goal is to uh, flatten the curve. Commissioner Guider, and I'm going to read this before we close today. Um, Douglas County citizens today with over 120 cases of coronavirus identified in various counties in Georgia. I want to assure the citizens of Douglas County this administration is working intensively with all of our partners at the local, state, and federal uh, level to address this unprecedented issue. We are communicating around the clock with our public officials and epidemiologists 
to activate unprecedented precautionary measures to mitigate and educate our uh, citizens about the COVID-19. Testing is available now in all 50 states. In light of the coronavirus pandemic, it is important for all of us to take aggressive steps to flatten the curve of exposure, risk, and transmission, which requires social distant behavior. Social distancing measures are essential components of the public health response to pandemics such as the flu. The objective of this mitigation measure is to reduce transmission, thereby delaying the epidemic peak, reducing the size of the epidemic peak and spreading cases over a longer time to relieve pressure on the healthcare system. Evidence-based practices of social distancing um, includes isolating persons, contract, uh, contact tracing, quarantine um, exposed persons, school closures, workplace measures, closures, and avoiding crowded spaces. Um, Board of Commissioners, we just want to make sure that our citizens know that we're totally committed to do what we can to address this catastrophic situation. Mailers have been sent to all the 58,000 parcels here in Douglas County, so those uh, mailers should hit your home soon and they provide uh, tips on what you can do to uh, mitigate or to keep this um, virus at bay. Older adults and people who have severe underlying chronic medical conditions like heart, lung, and diabetes seem to be at a higher risk of developing serious complications from COVID-19. Um, wash your hands for at least, uh, with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Hand sanitizer is acceptable, but it must contain 60% alcohol base. base. Please cough in your elbows, do not cough in your hands, and also blow your nose and tissues and discard all used tissues. We are referring to, such as in a surgical setting, uh, that we will be utilizing the Spalding classification system, which is, consists of critical, non-critical, and semi-critical procedures, but we will just go with non-critical, which you'll be wiping surfaces down with Clorox and bleach wipes and anything you can. So if you have any surfaces in your home, cell phones, what have you, just keep your surfaces, uh, refrigerator light uh, switches. Uh, anything that you put your hands on need to be wiped down uh, periodically throughout the day, throughout the day. With that being said, uh, citizens of Douglas County, I just want you to know that this Board of Commissioners is fully committed and uh, we will keep you engaged and updated as uh, we receive information from the state and federal uh, government. Thank you. Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before this Board of Commissioners today, this meeting is adjourned.